Welcome to Spotlight, a show dedicated to highlighting the cast, crew, and creators responsible for bringing our favorite kaiju films to life. Today's episode is going to feature the world's most recognizable suit actor and his legacy in the Showa era, Haruwa Nakajima. Haruwa Nakajima was born January 1st, 1929 in Yamagata, Japan. Not much information on his early life is translated in English, so this section will unfortunately be sparse. Reportedly as a young child, he made money by diving for seaweed, and at age 14 became a pilot trainee in the Imperial Navy. When World War II ended, Nakajima decided to become an actor and joined Toho Studios. One of his most prominent early stunt roles was in a war film titled Eagle of the Pacific, in which Nakajima was cast as a pilot. During a scene where his character was required to climb out of a burning airplane, the director, Ishiro Honda, warned Nakajima that there was quite a heavy amount of gunpowder inside of the plane. Nakajima didn't care, and continued to perform even with the dangerous risks. It was with this tenacity that Nakajima became noticed by Honda and kept his name on file for future projects. In 1954, Nakajima was selected to partake in the film that would change his career forever. You all know which film I'm talking about here, and I don't think the original Godzilla needs any introduction. Before the film's monster had a name, it was known simply as G, and the script Nakajima was given did not have any sort of physical description of the monster. To prepare for this role, he went to various zoos in the Tokyo area and began to study the movements of large animals like bears and elephants. The original suit for Godzilla weighed about 200 pounds and was made using a mixture of liquid concrete with a bamboo wire structure. Rubber was a very rare commodity in post-war Japan, so the special effects crew had to make do with what they had. Because of the suit's design, temperatures rose quickly inside of it, and Nakajima could only be in it for a few minutes at a time. I won't go too far into the making of the Godzilla suit, as I'm saving that for another video, but eventually a second suit was made that was much easier to maneuver in that was used for filming. Most people do not know that Haruwa Nakajima wasn't the only man to portray Godzilla in the original film. He shared the role with Katsumi Tezuka, who also went on to portray opposite Nakajima as the monster Anguirus in Godzilla Raids Again. Nakajima and Tezuka's portrayal as the titular monster in Godzilla has garnered enough praise to fill a textbook, so I don't think I need to say much. It's a raw, monstrous, and frightening performance that truly embodies the natural disaster and war analogy tone that director Ishiro Honda wanted to showcase with the film. One story regaled by Nakajima tells of his theater experience watching Godzilla. I sat at the front row and watched the audience's faces behind me. When Takashi Shimura was on screen, the adults were watching with great intent, and the children would look bored. But when Godzilla arrived, their faces instantly turned to stone, and they watched with awe at the destruction on the screen. As many kaiju fans know, Nakajima went on to portray almost every giant monster in a Toho science fiction film, including a recurring role as Godzilla in 12 of the 15 Showa films. Going down the list, Nakajima played Rodan in 1956's Rodan, Mogera in 1957's The Mysterians, Varan in 1958's Giant Monster Varan, the Mothra Larva in 1961's Mothra, a Matango Mushroom Man in Matango, Baragon in 1965's Frankenstein vs. Baragon, King Kong in 1967's King Kong Escapes, The Black Moth in 1969's Latitude Zero, and Gizora in 1970's Space Amoeba. Not only that, he joined the production of some of Eiji Tsuburaya's other projects, Ultra Q, the original Ultraman, and Ultra 7, playing the monsters Gomez, Pagos, Naranga, Gabora, Jiras, Kila, and Utam. As is common with stunt acting, injuries and accidents tend to happen. Nakajima was no stranger to that. During the filming of Rodan, the wires holding the suited Nakajima snapped, causing him to fall into the water. On the set of Varen, a miniature truck loaded with explosives detonated underneath him, scorching his stomach. And at the end of King Kong vs. Godzilla, when the two titans tumble into the tide, Nakajima hit his head on a rock and almost drowned. After performing as Godzilla for the final time in 1972's Godzilla vs. Gigan, Nakajima retired from the role and transitioned into more of a kaiju combat consultant and choreographer, showing newer suit actors the ropes and helping to coordinate their fight scenes. The footage on screen now is the last Nakajima ever donned the Godzilla suit. It was not a film use suit, rather it was one that was used for promoting Terror of Mechagodzilla in the late 1970s. Haruo Nakajima sadly passed away on August 8th of this year. He was the last living member of the Big Five that brought Godzilla to life. This group included Tomoyuki Tanaka, the creator and producer, Ishiro Honda, the director, Eiji Tsuburaya, the special effects director, Akira Ifukube, the composer, and Haruwa Nakajima, the actor. It was a very sad day for not just the greater kaiju fan community, but for the world. But in Nakajima's own words, a real actor does not cry. And I like to think that Nakajima wouldn't want us to be upset, but rather smile and look back on the work he did, and the smiles he brought us thanks to his tireless efforts both in and out of the monster costumes. He would want us to celebrate his life rather than mourn it. In keeping with the spirit, I'd like to name my favorite Haruo Nakajima roles, Gaira in War of the Gargantuas, Rodan in his debut movie, and Godzilla in Destroy All Monsters, Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, and of course, the original Godzilla. 
Thank you so much, Nakajima-san, for entertaining us through the years. Thank you for taking time out of your life to tour around the United States and visit many different fan conventions. Thank you, Haruo Nakajima, for being our one and only King of the Monsters. We'll be right back.